All right. In a previous video, we learned how to do photometry manually on a single image. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do it on a whole bunch of images at the same time. And we call this batch photometry. I'm going to share my screen. Okay, here we are in Afterglow, and I've already loaded up a whole bunch of images that we've taken of, in this case, it's Messier Object 28. It's a globular cluster. And one of the stars in this image is an RR Lyrae variable star. And so what we have to do is find the star in the image. And for that, we're going to use the finder chart provided in the lab. Let me grab that and show it to you. Okay, so we're gonna have to find the R. Lyrae star and the reference star. And we just have to mark them in one image. And as long as all of our settings are correct, it will automatically find these two stars in all the other images. Okay, now first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna invert my image to match the finder chart. Makes it a little bit easier to match up stars. There we go. Move to this upper corner. Now, when you do this, there's a possibility that your image will be rotated 180 degrees. So, when you zoom into your part of the finder chart, if it doesn't look right, uh, you may just have to rotate your image, and you can do that here. In this case, it's rotated correctly. I already see some stars in common. We've got this kind of double here. Here it is over there. I'm going to zoom in to this upper part. Bring the finder back. So these two are these two. We have a brighter one and a fainter one. Brighter one and a fainter one. That means this right here is the reference star. Right there. If we come over, we see kind of a line. There's a bright one and a faint, faint, fainter. If we come over here, bright one, faint, faint, and the fainter one you don't even see. But this one right here is the R. Lyrae star. So that's the R. Lyrae. That's the reference. Okay. So we're going to go to the photometry tool as before and make sure all of our switches are turned on, centroid clicks in particular. But also, we're going to check up here and make sure we're in sky coordinate mode. What makes batch photometry possible is if you have a coordinate system attached to each image. Then you only have to find your stars in one image, and it finds the coordinates, and then it goes to the other images, and as long as they have a coordinate system attached, it can find it in those images automatically. So you don't have to go through each one of these images. We probably have 30, 40, 50 images here. So, let's mark our stars. This was the R. Lyrae star. This was the reference star. So after Glow's decided to call them M1 and M2. But now what we can do is we can go to another image and you can see they've already been found. The exact same two stars. This one's a little blurry and it's been rotated, but it doesn't matter. I found the same two stars. In fact, let me rotate that around. Come back to photometry, and you can see found the correct two stars, even though it was rotated, and even though it's a little bit blurry, a little bit streaked. And it's found these stars in each and every image. Okay. So what we need to do now is Pick the images we want to photometer. I'm going to select all of them. I'm going to select both stars. So I want both stars to be measured. I want to be measured in all images. And then I press the photometry button and it dispatched a job to our central server and it completed that job. And now here it is in a comma separated value file which can be read by Excel or other spreadsheets. 
So I'm just gonna download that. And what we do with that, we'll see in an upcoming video. Okay, that's it for this video.